So for part A, we're going to analyze the vertical forces where string one and two meet. Here, uh, we can arrive to the relationship that T sub one would be equal to the weight sub A divided by cosine of phi. This is equaling 40 newtons divided by cosine of 35 degrees. This is equaling 49 newtons. We can then say uh, for part B, if we look at the horizontal forces where string one and two meet, T sub two is equaling T sub one times sine of phi. And this is equaling 49 newtons multiplied by sine of 35 degrees. And this is equaling 28 newtons. So this would be your answer for B. This would be your answer for A. For part C, now we're going to look at the point where string two and three meet. And at this point, we can say that if we denote the components of T sub three, of, string, of the tension in string three as T sub three X and T sub three Y, we can say that here, T sub three X is gonna be equal to T sub two. And this would be, of course, 28 newtons. T sub three Y would, of course, be equal to weight sub b, and this we know to be 50 newtons. So to find the magnitude of t sub 3, this would be the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. And what I mean by that is simply the square root of 28 newtons squared plus 50 newtons squared. And then we're taking the sum and, of course, squaring the sum of the squares. And this would be equal to 57 newtons. This would be your answer, or again, the magnitude of tension in string three. For part D, if we wanted the angle of string three, uh, we can say that theta would be arctan of T sub three Y divided by T sub three X. And this is going to be equal to arctan of 28 divided by 50. And this is equaling 29 degrees. This would be measured from the vertical, the vertical axis. So this would be our answer to part D for the angle of string three. That is the end of the solution. Thank you for watching.